here's a mistake that even advanced players are making, right? And that is being too close to a wall with the right shoulder peaks. So notice that when I barely step out behind this wall right here, I get this red X on my screen. And that tells me that I cannot shoot this guy right now. Watch this. I step back three or four feet. And there's no red cross, right? Ooh, what's going on, everybody? Toby Wan Shinobi here. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the major mistakes that most Fortnite Zero Build players are making that are causing them to lose countless amounts of games. And the funny thing is, they probably don't even realize it. Now, these mistakes are things that I really struggled with myself when I was an uh, intermediate or novice player, and I didn't understand what was happening. I didn't realize the mistakes I was making, and I didn't comprehend that a lot of these were the root of my losses. But once I started recognizing these mistakes and understanding how to fix them, my success rate in combat and my win rate skyrocketed in Fortnite Zero Build. So I really hope this video helps you out. And if it does, please leave a like on the video. Really helps me out. Let's get into it. All right, now before we jump into things, there's two things that I wanna mention. Number one, I'm using an eye tracker. You're probably gonna ask about that if I didn't mention it. I'm using an eye tracker so that you can see what I'm looking at on my screen. And I think that's pretty helpful uh, a lot of times for training, teaching people how to scan environments, that sort of thing when I'm playing. Basically, you can always see where my eyes are looking. Most people would think that most players are just looking in the center of the screen. That's not the case at all. I'm just trying to help you understand how I'm scanning my environment, how I'm looting, where I'm looking at all times. So that's that. The next thing Thing is that I'm going to put all my map codes, any maps that I play in this, I'm going to put in the video description, as well as any frequently asked questions, I'll probably have the answers to as well. So anyone's spamming me with the same question over and over again in the comments, I will try to put that into the video description. So if you feel like something's missing, go ahead and check that video description for map codes and answers to commonly asked questions. All right, now let's get into the first mistake that I see so many zero build players making that gets them killed so often, and that is looting out in the open and just generally being slow to loot out in the open, right? So we just eliminated this guy on this hill, right? And he just dropped a bunch of loot for us. We're all excited. We're probably pretty hurt from this fight. We probably have half the health that we have right now and we have a hundred health or whatever. We try to shield up as much as we can. That's the first thing you should always do before you go to loot. So shield up as much as you can. We're topped off for 250. And if you're not, then you really need to be careful about this as well. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is one, we just had this fight, right? A bunch of gunshots just went off. Everyone and their mother can hear that from 260 meters away they can hear and see that on visual audio. If you don't have visual audio turned on in this game, definitely go and do that. It's in your audio settings over here. It's under uh, visualize sound effects. Turn that on. It's going to help you tremendously if you haven't already. That'll show you gunshots. That'll show you footsteps as icons on your screen. From 260 meters out, people can hear a normal gunshot from 260 meters. That is forever away. That's 203 meters away to that shack. We can hear gunshots past that shack, right? So you just had this fight. You eliminated this player. Those gunshots were traded back and forth for a while. Everyone knows this fight happened within this range of you, right? So people are coming. The first thing we wanna do is check our surroundings. Before we run out onto this hill out in the open, we're checking our surroundings, right? Just do a quick flip around. It does not hurt. It takes maybe two, three seconds. Look around, scan the environment, Look at all the high ground, because that's where players usually are when they're watching from afar. We're looking at the high ground. Okay, clear. Next thing we want to do is we want to figure out what's in our inventory and what do we want in our inventory, right? So what is it that is on our wish list? Maybe it's heals. Maybe it's a combat SMG, okay? For me, it is a combat SMG and it's heals, right? So here I am. I'm looking at this loot pile and I see, oh, look at that. That looks like a combat SMG. You can mark it and it will tell you if you also mark from far away. Uh, just like you would mark an enemy. It actually marks the item and shows you what that item is from afar. So if you ever want to know from afar, you can always do that. So yeah, that's a combat SMG. So that's on my wish list. That is what I'm going to pick up. And then look, some heals, right? Those are the two things I want. Okay, so I'm exiting this cover, sliding through this open field, grabbing the heals, and notice I am moving the whole time. All right, now we're off. We're gone. We've got our items and we are out. Now we're scanning our environment again. No one around and we're moving on. Okay, that is very different from what most players do. Most players will do this instead of what, what I just did. They'll walk out here and they'll be like, okay, hollow loot. Uh, what do I want? Okay, that and then you're dead. Guy in the gas station just 
melted you in the back for 150 damage, and now he's shockwaving onto your head because you were just standing out in the open after a fight. Obviously, there was a fight that went on over here. He's coming to third party. He caught you out in the open while you're standing still and looting this stuff. So one of the biggest mistakes I see zero build players making is just looting out in the open, being a very easy target, not knowing what they want, being indecisive about their loot before they go in and pick it up. So after a fight, check your surroundings. Know what you want in your inventory. Check from afar if that stuff is on the ground. Then run in, grab it as quick as possible, and then keep moving. That is going to save you from so many unnecessary deaths in zero build because you cannot build, right? And this brings us into our next mistake that I see so many players make is when they're running through these open areas, they just have their gun out, right? They might be using up all their stamina, they have no stamina left, and they're running through this open field like this, right? With their gun out, and what do you know, someone tags them from this roof in the back. There's nothing they can do about it. They try to fumble around, get to their equipment, and they try to shock out, but by that time they're dead. So what I suggest instead, which is much more effective, when you're not gonna be fighting anyone, if you don't see anyone, go ahead and have that defensive equipment out or that mobility out when you're moving through open spaces like this, right? When you are an easy target or it feels sketchy at all, go ahead, have that equipment out and be ready to go. Basically be ready to defend yourself or get away, reposition, because a lot of times you're running through these open areas, especially in the end game, people are going to see you and they're gonna be watching you from afar, waiting for you to get into a precarious situation like this open area right here, and then they're just gonna start lighting you up. But because you watched this video, you are going to have your shock waves out or your bunker out instead. So when they start lighting you up in the back, you just go, oh, I'm out. I was already ready for that situation. I was already ready for you to light me up and take me by surprise, but I was expecting it, right? I was prepared. You're not dead anymore. Typically, you'd be dead because you'd be fumbling through your inventory trying to get to your shockwaves or to your porta bunker. but instead, you already have that out because you're just expecting someone to shoot you. You feel like this is a risky place to be. You are ready for someone to shoot you and you're ready to go, right? If you're not good at shockwaves, go ahead and watch my shockwave mastery video. I promise it'll help you out. All right, and that is bringing us to the next Next thought on that same tip is basically always having equipment in your inventory. In zero builds, you cannot build, right? There's no builds. So therefore, if you get out in an open space like this, or really any space at all, someone deletes this cover, maybe you are using it as cover, right? And you've got nothing, you're dead. This person's probably gonna light you up and you're not gonna be able to fight back because they have cover and you don't. So instead, you always need to be carrying at least one equipment item, some sort of utility. I always prioritize mobility over defensive equipment because defensive equipment, yes, you can put it down and it's gonna save your life for a little bit, but if you don't have heals, right, you're stuck here and they're eventually gonna blow out the front of this port fort and then you're gonna be out in the open and you still have no way to get out of here. You're just running on foot. I would always say carry mobility in zero builds because it's just so helpful, right? Look how far I can get away from danger uh, before somebody can laser me or finish me off, right? And then I can go ahead and find new loot and then move to the next position I need to go to. And on that note, if you are carrying defensive equipment or mobility, don't be afraid to use it. It is way better to use your equipment to save your life rather than hold on to it, worrying about wasting it, and then find out that you died because somebody pushed onto you and you, you were too scared to use it earlier on. Try to use it early, save your life, save your health so that you can still fight and continue on in the game. That's what this game's all about, surviving, being the last person standing. You can always find more equipment, but you cannot always find another life in this game especially in solos. Really quick, if you're getting value from this video and you want to support me as a creator, go ahead and type in Toby Wan Shinobi into your Fortnite item shop and hit accept. That is going to give me a very small percentage of any purchases that you make in the Fortnite store, and I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, the next mistake that I see tons of players making, even my master shinobis, I do master shinobi training with my uh, master level members three days a week, and I basically coach them, look over their shoulder, watch their gameplay, and provide them feedback. I see this all the time, even in their gameplay or a lot of their gameplay, is kind of crouching just like out in the open like this, right? Well, that is going to get you killed often because you're a slow moving target. Your trajectory is very easy to account for when you're crouched down. Anyone can hit a slow moving target like this, even if they have 
bad aim, right? Somebody can just absolutely smelt you while you're moving around like this. And I will see that all the time also in like end game scenarios where people are kind of like out in the open like this and they're like on a hill and they're scouting around for players and they're doing this thing, right? They're, they're just crouching around out in the open. Well, that is not helpful really in any way. All you are is just a slow moving target that's very easy to predict. So instead, what I preach all the time and you've seen it in my advanced combat movement video, if you haven't seen that video, please go check it out after this. I highly recommend it. It will change your zero build gameplay, I promise, is to always be moving like a weirdo, right? To be just doing this, right? So when you're scanning an environment, looking for players, end game, we're looking like this. We're just jumping around. We're looking at the ridge lines. We're being hard to hit. So if somebody takes us by surprise, they're not going to be able to land a bunch of shots on us because we're moving around and just kind of being hard to hit. They're going to see you anyways. If you're crouched around like this, they're still going to see you. If you're doing this, they're still going to see you. There's no difference except for one is very easy to hit and the other is very hard to hit. So always be moving like a weirdo when you're out in the open, scanning around, even moving through environments, right? Just always be moving like a weirdo like this, sliding, jumping, jumping into slides, sprinting, jumping into slides, that sort of thing. Okay. Do not be the person that is doing this. Do not be the person moving through environments out in the open, especially crouch down, being very easy to hit. I, this is the easiest kill in Fortnite right here is someone that is doing this, right? So don't do that. Also, when you're in these close range fights, I see a lot of like structure fights. People take structure fights like this, right? They're on this roof, there's someone below them, and it's just like this crouch off. They'll like both be crouching around like this. Well, once you get to a certain level, you realize that this is not efficient. Like both of you pretty much know where you are. Not really surprising me in any sort of way because I have good headphones. I can hear exactly where you are. All you're doing is taking yourself off of visual audio, but you're pretty much just as loud as just running around like this, right? So instead, what I highly recommend, moving like a weirdo, right? You throw off their visual audio, you throw off their hearing by moving around a Lot. They know that you're above them, right? And you're just being like kind of aggressive and crazy and you're like up here and then all of a sudden you're planning to make a drop on someone, right? And you're just kind of like being so loud up here. Oh, where is this guy? And then all of a sudden you're down here and boom. They're like, wait, what? He was just running around all over the roof. I would never expected that. Instead, if you do this, right? <laughs> and you're crouching near this edge, and you're like, okay, let's break this open. Maybe this wasn't, you know, there in the way, but even so, if you're crouching towards this edge, they can hear you. Most people that have good headphones can hear you. You'll take the slow drop, it's so predictable, and they're ready for you. Okay, very big difference as compared to when you're sprinting around this roof, and you know what you wanna do, you know you wanna make that drop, but instead you're doing this, right? And they're kind of confused on what you're going to do. And they're actually getting kind of scared by like just how crazy you seem like you're moving and fast. Like, oh my gosh, it's like a sweat, right? And then you drop down. Boom. I don't know what just happened, but yeah, that is a total surprise move to them in most cases and uh, usually works. So please try to take crouching out of your game. Instead, try to improve on your movement, sliding, jumping, that sort of thing, because in most cases, people are just going to see you. They're going to hear you anyways. And a lot of times it is better to just be moving fast and be hard to hit. Now, I will note that that is not always the case in some 1v1s, right? It is good to not give away your location. Say if someone doesn't know you're there, then go ahead. Yeah, crouch down and uh, from a distance they're not gonna be able to hear these little pitter patters but when you're up close they can usually hear it so you can move around like this and not show on visual audio and probably not be heard in most cases so this is okay like taking a 1v1 with someone behind this bush or whatever or if you're in a house and you really don't want someone to know you're there that's fine but what i don't want to see is these extended crouch sessions where you're just crouching everywhere and another person's crouching you guys both know you're in this area and you're both just having a crouch off right it really does not help it's not helping your gameplay it's not really improving you as a player so that is my advice towards crouching all right the next huge mistake that i see a lot of players making is not swapping weapons weapons at the appropriate ranges or swap into their equipment quickly. And that is something that is really going to take your game to the next level. I see a lot of players that will just stay on their shotgun in close range fights and they'll just keep using their shotgun the entire time and not swap to an SMG. Now that is really holding you back. And let's just talk about that really quick. Okay. So if we're keeping our shotgun out, say like a sharp tooth here, and we're just keeping it out and we're doing this, look how slow we are dealing damage, right? It's, it's, painful to watch. Now, if you have an infiltrator or a maven shotgun, you can kind of get away with that, but you have to be at very close range to be using those weapons effectively. But if you get really good at weapon swapping like this, 
You see how much faster it is to kill enemies using an SMG and a shotgun combo? It's like three or four times as fast, maybe five times as fast as if you're just keeping the shotgun out doing this, right? Even if you're hitting mediocre shots with your shotgun SMG combo, it's still going to be way faster because you are filling that time with SMG shots that you're uh, waiting for your shotgun cooldown to count come back up okay so definitely practice that in this map right here we are in the 1v1 versus bot area of the xeric 60 aim plus mechanics map link is in the video description now i'm on mouse and keyboard but controller players might want to lay out your inventory something like this shotgun smg and then maybe shockwaves or utility whatever it is port bunkers whatever in this last slot and then maybe heals and then ar the reason for that is you want to prioritize your shotgun and your smg and your shockwaves or equipment such as porta bunkers because you always want to be able to get to that stuff quickly you know you always want to be able to hit some of the shotguns swap the smg go back to your shotgun very quickly and then if you get in trouble you know you hit some of the shotgun but you're, you need to go you pull out the shockwaves they pretend this is a shockwave so you know we're sh shotgun shockwaves and we're out of there right make sure that you are setting up your inventory in a way that makes sense the reason i'm putting the shockwaves in the last slot is you can just left bumper over to that last slot instead of having to go all the way through it right memorize how many taps it's going to take you to get to every single item and then always put your items in the same spot and the best way to do that is by going into the settings right here going over to the second tab here of game settings going to preferred item slots and then configuring this this is going to allow you to put your items in the proper slots so that they always go into those slots when you loot things. And that way you have to do less inventory management in game. All right. Now, the next huge mistake that I see so many zero build players making is they don't prepare for the end game and they don't rotate to zone early in the end game. And what I mean by this is. One, you need to have equipment for an end game scenario so that if the end game is in a spot without very much cover or you get stuck in a bad spot and there's like five or six players in this small circle, you're not absolutely screwed because you don't have equipment, right? You want to have either shockwaves so that you can reposition or porta bunkers or ice walls, whatever it is to use as defense so you can set up your own little base and uh, be safe in zone without any cover. And if you can carry both of those things, even better if you're doing a two gun loadout, which would be like an AR and like an automatic shock shotgun or a fast firing shotgun and sometimes the best thing to do is to carry both mobility and defensive items such as a porta bunker and shockwaves so that you're really set up and ready to move in the end zone set up anywhere you want you can port a fort somewhere and then if you get in trouble you can shockwave out and then port a fort again and just kind of keep repositioning now the whole idea with these end games is that you want to get to zone early because you want to be the one that's setting up in that end zone and getting ready for players to come into you people that are being pushed by the storm that are probably just taking taking a fight and they got hurt and now they're limping into zone and you're able to eliminate them. You do not want to be on the opposite side of that where you are being pushed by the storm towards a bunch of people that are nice and set up and ready to go from their port forts or their nice cover and they're just putting shots on you as you got this dangerous storm at your back that's doing like five to ten tick of damage, right? That is a very bad problem to have and if you're constantly rotating late to the end game circles, it is something that you're going to be facing all the time. Trust me, it took me a long time to learn this, but now when it comes down to just like 50 15 players remaining, I'm pretty much always looking at zone. I'm just looking at that circle and I'm trying to arrive early and trying to secure the best spot in zone. And I'm also trying to make sure that at the very least, I have a lot of shockwaves and some good heals so that when I get into that end zone, I'm set up to move or whatever. And if I can get porta bunkers and shockwaves and heals, even better. So try not to waste all of your equipment early on and make sure you're going into the end game with the odds in your favor. All right, now the next monumental mistake that I see so many people players making whether it's beginner intermediate or advanced players is not using the third person camera and the right shoulder peak enough and some players aren't even using the right shoulder peak at all now when i talk about the right shoulder peak i mean this see how i can see this player and they cannot see me i'm behind this wall they cannot see me at all that is a third person camera notice how my reticle on my character is centered on the right arm of my player the right shoulder here that is very unique to fortnite and third person games it is not found in a first person shooter so you definitely need to take advantage of that because the right shoulder peak is a huge advantage in any fight i am always taking right shoulder peaks in all engagements whenever i can if i can get the right shoulder peak that is what i'm going for and pretty much every advanced player is okay so you need to start incorporating it into your gameplay all right so now watch how nasty this is right i can see this player all i have to do is strafe out and boom boom right like all i have to do is strafe out and pull the trigger 
and I guarantee because of the placement of that person's camera, which is on their right shoulder as well, somewhere around here, right, where I'm aiming, their camera's probably about right here. They can barely see me at all when I'm shooting them. When I'm right here, they can barely see me at all. Oh my God. <laughs> what is that a fuzzy? <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Somebody got in my game. Speaking of fuzzy in the right shoulder peak, check out my how to 1v1 video where I go in depth about this right shoulder camera and how to use the right shoulder peak effectively. I'm not gonna go into as much depth here. But when we're talking about right shoulder peaks, right? You wanna be using this camera so that you're always strafing on the right side of a wall and you do not wanna be strafing on the left side of cover here because check this out. I have to come all the way out here to see this guy. See how much of my body is exposed to this guy? My entire body. Whereas right shoulder, this guy barely even sees my body at all. Right shoulder peaks are incredibly important in close range combat and long range combat. I bet you right now, if I do this right shoulder peak, this guy could not even see me. I guarantee it. Because I'm so close and so tight to this wall right here, this corner, this guy's actually not able to see me in game at all. All right, now this third person camera is also really powerful for what they call head glitching, right? So I can see all of these characters, all of these enemies out here in this battlefield. Look at Fuzzy over there trying to sneak around. <laughs> I can see him, right? He has no chance of seeing me right now. I'm fully behind cover, but I can see all of him with these targets right here. I can see all of them, but all they can see right now is probably the very tippy top of my head maybe my little cat ears right so use that as well right the third person camera looking over objects from height allows you to see everything when they cannot see you so it's great for surveying and also using head glitches like this right where this guy can barely see me all right now here's a mistake that even advanced players are making right and that is being too close to a wall with the right shoulder peaks so notice that when i barely step out behind this wall right here i get this red x on my screen and that tells me that i cannot shoot this guy right now watch this i step back three or four feet and there's no red cross right i can hit this guy easily and that's really helpful with these right shoulder peaks so you can come out of cover really quick land a shot and go right back into cover and i promise you this guy can barely see me when i'm doing that because of his right shoulder camera so that is how to do a proper right shoulder peek off of a wall and you really want to practice coming out quickly shooting and then going right back into cover and you got to kind of play with it and learn how to do uh, the right shoulder peak properly so you can do it as quickly as possible and be seen for the least amount of time possible. And I highly recommend the Shinobi testing grounds for practicing this or the map that I'm using right here, which is Shinobi ZB training FFA with Portal Island. And the way to access these portals to get up to this training island up here is through these purple beams right at the bottom of these purple beams there is a rift that you can enter and that will take you up to the training island where you've got all kinds of guns and enemies to practice with all right so the next huge mistake that i see so many players making is taking bad engagements and taking 50 50 engagements now a 50 50 engagement looks like this right i come in and i just start fighting fuzzy out in the open like this and we're just figuring out who has the better aim who's got the better internet connection and it's just kind of a dice roll what happens right you're just hoping that you do more damage than your enemy and you're just out in the open taking a fight. That is not good. And you keep doing that over and over again, you are going to lose eventually. So if you do that, maybe you win 80% of those fights, but you take 10 fights, 20% chance of losing the game there. So let's just not take that chance. And instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put good initial damage on our enemy like this, right? And then we push in to finish them off and get the kill, that sort of thing. Or we're using good cover in close range fights or long range fights so that we have an advantage, right? Maybe that right shoulder peak we were talking about or high ground, something like that. So right here, I'm fighting Fuzzy, he's out in the open. I've got cover, he doesn't, he's in trouble, but I am safe. This is a very good fight, and this is probably more like 80-20. If I'm behind cover and he's not, I have basically an 80% chance of winning this fight, maybe a 20% chance of losing it if he's got some crazy aim or something and fries me. But if he's out in the open and I've got cover, I am winning that fight 80% of the time, even if I am a less skilled player. He is losing this fight 80% of the time because he doesn't know when I'm gonna pop out of cover and hit him, right? I can do 100 damage and go right back to cover, do another 100 damage, and he's in real trouble, and he hasn't even landed a bullet on me, right? So this is the other best way to take a fight, putting yourself in advantage where you're in cover and your enemy's not. So yeah, either do initial big damage out in the open and then push into the open and then take the 50-50, but they're much more hurt than you are, or use good cover, high ground, right shoulder peaks, whatever you got, so that you put yourself in an advantage in every fight. So those are seven major mistakes that I 
see all types of zero build players making and it often results in losing them the game. If you can get those seven mistakes out of your gameplay, I promise your success rate is going to skyrocket. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a like on the video. It really helps my channel. And if you like this type of content, check out my channel and my must watch playlist for zero build. I make Fortnite zero build content with the goal of improving your zero build gameplay. And if you really want to take your training to the next level, check out a Shinobi clan membership. Click that join button or the link in the video description where you can join as a master member and get training two to three days per week with myself and other master members. Or if you want to book a two hour one on one training with myself, check out kobiwanshinobi.com for booking and prices. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Have yourself a great day. Shinobi out.